Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chuck Everson, and welcome to the Big East Rewind with my host, with the most, Sonny Sparrow <laughs> from Syracuse University. How are you today, Sonny? Chuck, I'm great, man. You you had me working overnight. Let me tell you, I was doing my research. Well, I wanted to make sure I was day. up on this. You know, <laughs> this is a big, big moment. I hope you did big some moment. research. We got a, we got a yeah. lot of uh, MVP type players here with us today. We got a big room full of people. You know. 85, we were going to go back to the future, Sonny, back to 1985, <laughs> like Doc and Marty, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to talk about well, the historic year that it was for the Big East, having three teams. Well, well Chuck, Sonny knows he was there. What's oh, that? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even get introduced yet. <laughs> he didn't even, no, he's, right on, he's right on cue. <laughs> That's so, why he's the boy. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the historic NCAA tournament where we had three teams from the Big East in the Final Four. It hasn't been done before or since, so it's his historic year. And to that degree, we got a lot of great players here with us today, Sonny. Um, we've got the three teams that were in the Final Four represented very well, I might add. From Georgetown University, we got Billy Martin and Horace Broadnax from the Hoyas down here hanging with us today. From St. John's, we've got Ron Stewart and Billy Winnington hanging with us today. And from Villanova, the Wildcats, we've got Harold Presley. The ha it's Harold Squared today, Sonny. Harold mm -hmm. Presley and Harold Jensen are both with us today. How's everybody doing? How are we, guys? Doing great. Good doing great, so great Chuck and Sonny. Awesome, well, hey, thank you all. Thank you all for uh, for coming in and joining <laughs> us today and giving us some of your time so we can uh, – we can discuss this. I mean, I don't think um, this type of forum, I don't think this has ever been done where we've had uh, guys from different teams talking about the tournament and, and, uh, and, and what we're going to discuss today. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm pretty excited. So why don't you kick it off, Sonny? All right. Well, let's start, let's start with the, the season. Cause we have talked about it in another podcast, another uh, um, podcast about, Villanova, excuse me, uh, St. John's won, Georgetown won, and Georgetown started the season as a preseason one, and, and just, just that whole thing, and then rolling into the Big East tournament, right? So at that point, St. John's plays Georgetown for a third time. We played Georgetown for a third time. Nova, you guys had played St. John's, right, up until – that time, a third time. So let's talk about the Big East tournament. Right, right. Let's get back. Let's go right to Madison Square Garden. Let's get right into it. How's that sound? Good. <laughs> All right. Even though, you got even it. though, right. So we do have the four teams represented. Even though we didn't make it to the finals, I will say our semifinal game with Georgetown had a nice little interaction with uh, Patrick and Pearl, and that was one of those uh, moments that uh, I think I'll never forget as uh, someone watching the game being part of it. So let's talk about the semifinal game. So let's start, let's start with Billy and Ronnie and your matchup with Villanova in the semifinals. How did that feel going into the game? What did you guys think? Go ahead, Ronnie. Uh, personally, I think we, we felt, we felt pretty, uh, pretty confident. Number one, you know, during that season, we were, we were, you know, one and two or th top three in the country. And uh, also, as I mentioned on the, on the other podcast, um, for some reason, I guess for matchup reasons, we always um, fared well against Villanova. So we felt uh, we felt pretty confident, you know. And plus, we were we were kind of quote unquote at home, you know. Even though it's you know it's the biggest tournament, you have fans coming from everywhere. But um, we felt pretty confident going into the game. Now, Harold Presley, you got to talk press. You got to answer that. Now, how did you guys feel matching up with St. John's? This is an easy one. We were like, not them again. Gosh. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. It was such a, it was such a tough, tough go with uh, St. John's that year. Um, and I go back to the previous year before they got uh, uh, their all-star team. Um, it was a, a, a nice little matchup in my sophomore year, Billy's. Uh, junior year um, but the next year we just had no answers for anything that they had uh, the guys coming off the bench the the starters you know you got 
Uh, you got a whole team full of to be NBA players and they were athletic and they were big and they were strong. And then you got Walter Berry who just gave me fits every time I just said his name. <laughs> it was just a horrible experience. And uh, we were just happy to have gotten that first win against Pittsburgh before even seeing uh, St. John. So knowing that they were up next was not a good feeling for us. It really wasn't. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop right there because that, <laughs> that was not fun to see them. You know, Prez, they say that it's tough to beat a team three times in one season, but St. John's really didn't have much of a problem with that, <laughs> no, did they? It, it was that? You throw that right out the window because they destroyed us each and every time. And I know there was a couple of games where um, it, it felt like it was far more than it was. Uh, but every time I, every time I looked up, I thought, well, we're down 30 again at the St. John's. <laughs> it was a horrible, <laughs> you guys had a monster squad and, and the way you matched up against us just left us like, I don't, we don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And let's just, let's just make it so that we're not totally embarrassed. <laughs> But I mean, you kind of matched up size wise, gents. What what was the difference? I mean, you know, Chuck likes to think it was the lefties, right? Oh, he, he he wants to say the lefties. You just couldn't handle Mullins. You Walter couldn't handle him. Walter Berry, right? <laughs> what, what 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 was your thoughts on it? Because we're going to get from Billy Wenitz. He's going to tell us in a minute his thoughts. But you got to tell us what you see, Jess. Yeah, you know, um, I couldn't agree more with Prez. But my own opinion was that they were really good and just better than us in every position for the most part. Um, I mean, Prez and Eddie uh, and Dwayne could kind of compete up front, but backcourt wise, I mean, we just, we just had a really tough time handling their talent. And it was interesting because we, we, we had a really good feel for what they were going to do, what they were running. It wasn't super, and these, they can correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't super complicated at all. They just did it so well. And at such a high level, it was just impossible to really to really hang with them and compete with them. I mean, they were just that good, that good. It was um, humbling to say the least. <laughs> All right, Billy Wennington, you got you got you're up now. What do you guys say? I, I, I'm gonna echo Ron. We felt good. I mean, really, at that that year, we felt good against everyone, and and uh, e even Georgetown uh, going into it at least the first two times, um, but. Big East tournament, like, like Ronnie said, going to Madison Square Garden for us was a home game. We played, I think, all but two Big East games in the garden that year. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just a fun place for us to go. So we weren't too worried about it. And, and you know, we did have the two, in my opinion, the two of the best left-handers in the country uh, at the time. And uh, Chris was just on a roll. And he was he was on a mission that year and as playing so well. And, and Walt, you know, coming in that first year with us was, was really – uh, unstoppable. And it was, it was so unique, even in practice, you know, you just watching him in practice, having to guard him at different times and, you know, coach switching things up a little bit. He's just so, he, everything's different. I, we, we say he never shot the ball the same way twice the whole season and was able to score anywhere. And the depth of that team and with Ronnie and the leadership but, but between Ronnie, myself and Chris and uh, how hard everyone worked, we, we've really felt confident going into every single game we played. So now you get you get past us, luckily, like Prez described, and now the mighty Georgetown Hoyas are waiting for you on the other end. You got now. Before we get there, Sonny, let's go to to you yeah. for because well, that, game, that game, first of all, was a big rivalry game. The mm -hmm. other Final Four game on that night, and uh, you know the the Hoyas and the Orange Men were always at each other's throats, and it always got physical, like it does in most nights in the Big East. Um, talk about. Talk about what ha some of the things that went on in that game that made it a little extra uh, physical. Well, I'll say two things. The lead up to that game, two things had occurred. We had a little fracas with Georgetown the year prior with Michael and Andre. And Bayheim and the press conference throwing the chair. And I, I know that that just, that just ate at him for a while. So I think he was more than motivated. And then, and just checking the numbers, I just, I just saw that Georgetown had, had, had only one loss at St. John's. They broke a 29 game win streak longest in the country. And then their other loss was to Syracuse up in Syracuse. I think Pearl hit a last second shot at the elbow or something. 
So we went in thinking, okay, we have a legitimate shot, even though we're giving up size at a, almost every position. And, and it was just motivating. And we feel like, oh, we travel well, we'll have a pretty good crowd there, but it's Georgetown and you've got to have your A game. So it was a tough game, but I don't think we were as close as we were the year before. So that's my memory of it. I know Horace and Billy can fill in a lot of details because they were on the, they were on the plus side of that game. So tell, talk us, talk to us about your matchup with Syracuse, Horace. Uh, just co- thinking, thinking about Coach Thompson, man. I think it, uh, it was a revenge tour, you know, because, uh, like you said, Syracuse and, and, and St. John's beat us during the season, so uh, we definitely wanted to uh, get some get back. But um, I know from my perspective, uh, I knew it was going to be tough because I had to guard uh, Pearl Washington or at least try to guard him. I don't think I guarded him that well, but uh, no, it, it was it was kind of fun, you know. what I mean. Um, you know, I tell people about going into Madison Square Garden with St. John, Syracuse, Georgetown. It was, it was a beautiful place to play. So um, it was going to be a tough matchup. You know, we always, you know, a lot of people thought we did respect our opponents. We always gave 100% respect to our opponents. And we, we, we were thoroughly prepared uh, for, uh, you know, Pearl Washington because he was, he was unbelievable. So I think me, Michael, and David used to, practice his uh, moves sometimes uh, because he was so unbelievable. So, uh, but it was fun. I mean, I, th- I think we, we we prepared and Coach Thompson uh, had us prepared and uh, we did, did what we had to do. How about you, Billy? What were some of the matchups? What were some of the key things that you remember from that game? Well, uh, I, I just remember uh, from the Syracuse game that, uh, that there was a little animosity the year before, so it was a little heated. But we were, we were very evenly matched, you know I mean? You know, there were a lot of similar players, you know, Raphael and David, you know, the point guards, you had Pearl and Mike Jackson. And uh, and then, you know, with the bigs, you know, um, it, was, it, was, it was, you know, it was very competitive. I, I remember that. We always had a lot of respect for Syracuse uh, because, you know, the, the battles were always heated. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I uh, I just I just remember being at Madison Square Garden that senior year, and um, it was just you know it was always magical going to Ma- at Madison Square you know just the feel of it, and uh, but yeah but getting by Syracuse uh, and and going against St. John's uh, and, and the, you know the next game was you know just you know for us because you know we were one and one we won one they won one and. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, getting by Syracuse was huge. I, I got I got to ask you, because we asked Gene Smith the same question. So when you guys were staying about three hours away by bus, weren't you exhausted when you got to the arena? I mean, weren't you at least tired at all? Hey, hey Bill, I got I got to tell you, first of all, I told Sonny, I, I had to pick somebody up at the Rye Marriott not too long ago. And I stood there and I said, I'm walking in the footsteps of the Hoyas right now. I'm looking around. <laughs> I'm in Rye. I was <laughs> hey, son, yeah. let me tell you something, man. We we had to drive about an hour and 15 minutes to the cap center. So <laughs> I was just telling somebody that the other day. I said, who does that? You know, <laughs> a home we, game. The, we were in the heart of D.C. and had to drive out to Maryland. <laughs> it was in, in D.C. traffic trying to get out of the city when the whole city is trying to leave to play uh, a seven o'clock game. So we had to leave by three o'clock just to get there uh, on time. So, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we were used to it. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we were spoiled. We had the arena right in the middle of campus. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so, so now we get to the championship game and it's the big matchup that everybody was waiting for. It's the number one team in the country versus the number two team in the country. Yep. And um, Billy, take us through that. Uh, a little bit there. Well, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta apologize for that. I didn't, I didn't go over the notes. But um, uh, when we played St. John's, uh, we we were in a good place uh, because you know we matched up so well. You know they were athletic, uh, we were athletic, and um, it, it really came down to uh, to the defense and who wanted it more and. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, the style of plays, you know, it's it's like when we played Villanova, they, they were our nemesis, you know, their, their style of play gave us problems, uh, you know, 
we can play our best game and still be in a tight game. But with St. John's, when things went well, it went lopsided real quick. And I, I don't know for what reason. It never happened with Syracuse. Uh, it was always tight. But for some reason, when we played St. John, if it went well, uh, it got lopsided. That's, that's just my recollection of, of uh, you know, playing against St. John's. So, uh, Bill Winnington, when, when, when you guys were ready to come in and Coach Conaseca was going over a game plan for the Hoyas, now it's the third time that season that you're playing them. What was, what was kind of your strategy as a team going into that game? Was it different than the other two games? You had already split, right? And now you're going into the garden for the chip. And uh, did, the, did the strategy change? And, and if so, what were the changes that he put in? Nobody's wearing a sweater. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was good. It was, it was that, that was a game, wasn't it? The championship game where he came out with the, the sweater on? Yeah. Or was that the game before that? No, no, that was a game was, before that. That was a game before that. So, it, it, you know what? It was uh, – Louis very superstitious. And one of, these, one of the sayings he always say, would say is, you got to go home with who you brought to the dance. So there were not a lot of changes. He just wa- expected us and wanted us to execute better. And so we kind of had the same game plan. Obviously, Chris and Walt offensively were very much involved in everything we did offensively. And – uh, with, with Georgetown, just try, try and find a way to slow Patrick down. And uh, Billy, thank you very much for the compliment. No one's ever called me a good athlete before. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but maybe you weren't talking about me. But uh, well, you, you it, were one of them, Bill. Absolutely. <laughs> look, at, look at all you've done. Look how far you've taken things. You know, at seven feet, you know, to be able to move that. And you just didn't see a lot of guys at that time with those yep. kind of skills and that kind of athletic ability. And yeah, we had one guy, but you know, you guys had four or five. You know, Stewart was nice. Uh, uh, you had Barry. Uh, you know, and one year you played with another big guy. I think his name was Alden, Alden or something like that. Or yeah, Alden. Alan. Yeah, Alan. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so you, you guys always had terrific bigs, but yeah, Bill, you you were terrific. You know, <laughs> well, that, you know, well, thank Chris you, Mullen, Mark Jackson, Willie Glass. I mean, you can go down the list of guys. I mean, you just you know thoroughbreds. You know, and. Uh, it was always fun, you know. It was always fun. It's like, it was, you know, in many ways, it's like taking it to the streets because, you know, you had a bunch of athletes just going at it. We knew what to expect. You, yep. and what you were just talking about, Louis didn't change his formula. We knew what to expect from you guys. The same thing with us. You knew, you guys knew what we were bringing. And yep. uh, it was a blast. It was great. It was fun. And it was, uh, to, to be honest with you, and, I, and I've credited Georgetown and especially Patrick for uh, helping me to get, get to where I am today because – preparing for you guys and uh, the mental uh, on, uh, preparation we had to do j- to play that physical all the time or really challenged us. And it was, it was a real battle out there on the floor and you, you had to play smart. You couldn't make any mistakes because uh, you guys were very physical. You played great defense and really pushed us to our limits all the time. And unfortunately, we, I mean, we won the first game, but I honestly, and in my heart, and I, th- I don't know how Ronnie, I've never talked to Ronnie about it, but if, if that game was another two minutes, you guys probably would have won it. Because I don't know if you remember, we had a, we had a lead, and the last five minutes, you came back, and we, won- we only won by a point. Well, we were at home. We were fighting for our lives. You guys came and invaded our house and just exploded. You know, Walter was a shock to us. We had no idea how good he was. We knew about Chris. We've been battling Chris for years. We knew about you guys. We knew about Mark. And, uh, and, you know, and some of the other guys, but, you know, Walter shocked us, man. He was just, he was fantastic. Of course, I had to guard him. So, not to say I was done. <laughs> so was I. But I just say that. And the, guy, the guy was fantastic. I mean, you know, he was a lefty, you know, with big shoulders, was explosive, you know, and didn't shoot a shot out of 10 or 15 feet. I mean, everything was around the basket. He was, he was fantastic. And, uh, and that was a challenge. It was a challenge every time we met you guys. You, you know what I you know what I looked up I saw that Georgetown you guys were three points away from having a perfect season you lost by one to St John's and two to us so kudos for you Horace now who was your matchup when you guys played St John's it was probably Mark Jackson right it's Mark Jackson and I was just, I forgot about uh, Mike Moses too Mike, Mike yeah. Moses yeah mm. uh, he was uh, he was at the University of Florida and transferred up so uh, 
Um, that's St. John's. I mean, just like you said, losing by two points and you lost at the Cap Center. Um, you know, I, th I think y'all guys had, uh, you know, Coach Thompson is a special dude, man. He's a special dude, you know. I have to and, and really know about him. So, you know, when, even though we lost a few points at the Cap Center, you know, he really never let us live that down. So, uh, just coming into the championship game against St. John's, you know, we were always motivated. He, he had us motivated, and, you know, playing against Chris, man. Chris, I was I talked to people about Chris Mullins uh, not too long ago the other day about how good he was, you know, how he could shoot the basketball. Uh, I keep off the chart. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And it was a, it was a tough, tough uh, defend. Uh, you know, Wingate had to guard him, and, you know, we tried to switch him off to me, Michael, uh, Reggie. And, uh, it, was, it was tough because you had to keep an eye on him and then off the barrier. I was going to ask Bill Winnington, uh, how, how tall is Walter? A lot of people say he was 6'8", but he was about 6'3 and a half, 6'4". Uh, he was just so crafty. And that's why nobody couldn't really guard him because he, he was so – he keeps you off balance. You know? He was definitely 6'8". I six know all eight. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if Preston was going to talk. Yeah, he, he was, was a full 6'8". <laughs> <eight>. And <laughs> they played like he was 7'2". <laughs> He had long arms too, didn't he? Oh, he did. I think he was that slow. Came out of nowhere. I remember coming out of nowhere. You know, he he was. It, what was so difficult about him was he jumped so quick, yeah. and he did have that left hand, and he would guard it so well with his right arm that if you put your nose and you know I got a big nose, you put your nose anywhere <laughs> near it, it was going to get broke, and he would just <laughs> jump right into you with that elbow, and oh. Oh, man, I just remember massing it. Can't you stop him? No, coach, I can't stop him. <laughs> He's so good. So, so good. So four, on, there's four pretty good coaches right there, by the way. And, and oh, my God. I was just about to say that. About that. I was just right? about to say that. How blessed were, were we, all of us, with incredible coaches in their own ways? Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the Mount Rushmore of coaches back then, it would be those four oh, yeah. guys, right? You know? No doubt. Yeah. You know, I think, I think the review for the Big East got it right with the four players that they talked with and the four coaches that they talked with on that uh, 30 for 30. You mind if I back it up for a second? Because this is uh, – I came in as a freshman and and uh, coach says, uh, Prez, we're going to start you on Chris Mullen. And I'm like, all right. And everybody just kept telling me, he's going to destroy you. <laughs> he's just going to shoot it all over you. And at halftime, I think he had maybe four points. And I walked in, I'm like, this is the guy you're talking about? <laughs> There's no problem here. We came back out and he had 24 in the second half. I'm like, oh, you met Chris Mullen. Chris, I got out. Oh, he destroyed me that second half. Wow. I tell you what, you guys, and I'm talking about St. John's and Georgetown and Syracuse. Wow, talented. You guys just, every yeah. single night, it was just like, ah. Oh. Out again, man! Does it ever end? Do they ever have a bad game? Yeah. Wow! It, very impressive, mm -hmm. and, and wow! I, I just think about uh, the whole group, and I know we're going to get to the to the um, to the championship run. But I got to ask um, Billy Martin. Tell me about five star basketball camp. What year did you go to five star basketball camp? Listen. Uh, that's where I first met Ed. That's where I first met uh, Gary. That's where I first met Dwayne, was at Five Star. That's where I first met you guys and uh, yeah. some of the other guys. And uh, I was, uh, let me think of the year. Uh, ooh. You don't have to. I was a sophomore. I was a sophomore. You were a junior. And I was uh, standing in the background watching the. Um, individual instruction and they had you on the court and <clears throat> Duncan and you guys had a dunk and that's all you could do was dunk <laughs> drop step and dunk and I'm sitting and I'm like whoa <laughs> and I swore that you were seven one at that time because the way you were jumping over those guys and this dunking on it I'm like this is incredible I stood back there I was at that camp you would have no idea because I wasn't stepping in there with you high jumpers but I was just like, wow, this Billy Martin. And, and I know, we're, again, we're getting into the, the championship, but I always had a soft spot for Billy Martin because 
uh, of that five star camp. And, and I know, I know, Billy, I know your story. I actually know um, the things that you went through. I know you went to Georgetown uh, to be a three man <laughs> uh, coming out of high school. I know you used to shoot jumpers and all that kind of stuff for you to change your game to make sure that you guys uh, won and won big each and every year. So, and I, I tell you, I'm, I just have this, this place in my heart that just am so appreciative of, of yeah it really touched me because uh, not a lot of people would would do that they would transfer they would yeah. uh, try to get something else going yeah, but for, yeah uh, get, forget it guys today would transfer yeah being yeah, the right. transfer portal right now yeah, yeah. with the Prez, other you're ruining, the, you're ruining the whole image Prez, of the big east yeah. not really supposed to be uh, yeah. everybody well, you know. we, we were supposed to referee yeah, this uh, thing but we're supposed to referee now now, now that he, he's buttered me up let me just reiterate on something i said on our last show about the toughest players i ever played against in the big east he and did say one it. of my list was was, was harold yeah you know because harold was like looking in a mirror you know uh he was just more skilled you know he was so crafty around the basket you know, so quick off of his feet. He was terrific. You know, he gave me fits every time we played, you know? Dude. Yeah. And so He I, said it. He the, said the, it. The respect is mutual, Harold. You the about, he said it. <laughs> you know? If you would have known how I left that camp uh, that week, I was like, y'all don't have a clue. This is Billy Martin. <laughs> this one here. <laughs> and then getting to play with Horace in the uh, in Indianapolis. Whenever you guys played, well, what you guys don't know is I was so close to going to Georgetown. My dad, my dad said, "No, you're going to Georgetown," and I. It came down to Villanova, Georgetown, and Notre Dame a little bit just because of the school that I went to. Everybody wanted to have them in, um, but it really came down to Villanova, Georgetown, and I had so much respect for John Thompson and the program that he put together that it was a hard, hard decision. Patrick showed me around campus when I came into town. I stayed in his room, and I was just so close, and, and it was really just Mass Amino. For some reason, Mass Amino just... Uh, he just had me, <clears throat> but wow, the, uh, I was so impressed with the program and, and John Thompson and, and sleepy Floyd. John asked me, he said, Harold, <clears throat> and I'm watching practice. He's, can you make shots like sleepy Floyd? And I'm looking and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he hit one from the hash. And I was like, Ooh, maybe not like that. <laughs> Just the practices, how hard you guys went. And I know we all, the Big East, everybody practiced so hard. We all had the same mentality. The, the coaches were just exactly the same. You're going to outwork the rest and become the best. And that was the whole mentality. But I was so happy for all of you guys when you didn't play against us. Uh, I couldn't root for any one of you in particular when you played each other because I had a passion for all of you. You know, like I said, but Horace, I knew people on all the teams and I just wanted to see the Big East win when they went outside the conference and you guys just poured it on people. And I was, it, it made us so proud when we weren't in that position. So I thank you guys. Billy Winnerton, and you're, you're an amazing guy. And I still have that photo that we took just a couple of years ago uh, here in Sacramento after one of the Kings, and after the, one of the Kings games and you, uh, and Chris and everybody got in the court and it was a Big East uh, reunion. And we took this beautiful picture and, and I sent it out to all my friends and they, were, they just relived the whole thing. Ah, oh, St. John's and George had it. Wow, what a great reunion. And those are special times and I really appreciate that. But in, Billy, in an effort to get us back on track, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> let me do my job, Press, you know. <laughs> Uh, and like, I thought this press. was Prez's show. Yeah. It's, a, it's an hour long show, Prez. All right. So here we go. Uh, now we get through the Big East tournament and it's selection Sunday. All right, Ronnie, we haven't heard from you in a few minutes. What, what did you guys do as a team? How did you, did you get together for that? Did, was it something that you guys did individually? Were you together as a team to find out where you were going? Obviously you guys were in the tournament. And what was the feeling like when they found out that they were sending you out west? 
Hey, if I, can I go? Can I go back to the Biggie's tournament real, real quick? The final. Sure. Why not? I'm gonna bounce with something that Billy Martin said. Like when he when he said that you know when they played well, it went downhill real quick. Well, I, I really believe we lost the championship game when we beat uh, Georgetown at Georgetown. Because I can remember after that game, after we won, we were very excited. And there were about two or three. I remember Dave Wingate walked past us. I can't remember who else, but the first thing they said, they said, wait till we get to the final. At that time. So we played them uh, uh, one more time after that. And then we played them in the final again. And I think at that time, you know, they just, they just had, they came into the garden with, with, a, with a huge, huge, huge chip on the shoulder. A huge chip, and we really—I mean, we had—we had no answer for them because when they came, when they came re really ready, I think we snuck up on them in in, uh, in, in the Capital Center, and you know we snuck up, up snuck up on with uh, Walter Berry also. Nobody nobody really knew him, but um, yeah, when they when they when they when they were on, on in focus and 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 ready to play, they were very hard to deal with. But to answer your question, Chuck, about uh, what we did, you know, we always got together. Uh, we were always together, most of the times at Alumni Hall. Um, and we knew, I mean, that year we knew, you know, that we were probably going to be a number one seed, just where we were going. And then uh, we found we were going out west, you know, we just looked at it as, you know, well, that's that's the route we have to take. And, and we had really from the beginning of the season, to be quite honest with you, from the beginning of the season, that was, that our, our, our objective was, was the Final Four. It was the Final Four or bust. And it was, there was nothing else. So, you know, Coach always talked about, you know, keeping an even keel, you know, if you, if you, if you lose or if we, if we win, always staying on an even keel. Now that year we only lost to, to two teams, um, Georgetown three times and uh, Niagara University. Yeah, One, big upset. You know, a big, up, big upset. But uh, yeah, we were, we, we were all together and um, just, you know, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a lot of excitement because we knew where we were going, but it was just like, okay, this is where, this is where our mission starts, you know, and, you know. How about you, gents? I mean, talk about what we used to do um, for the for the uh, sun, Sunday selection show and how we got together and and how um, we, we weren't sure exactly what was going to happen, right? No, we weren't at all. These guys, actually. these guys knew they were going to be number one seeds. Yeah, we, we weren't. Yeah, so we we were hoping that we were we had two ones in our seating actually. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, with our group, it was getting together and um, you know really just holding hands and hoping that we would get a shot. It was actually I'm pretty sure '85 was the first year the tournament went to 64 teams. Yes. Right? Yep. So again, thank God for that because chances are we probably don't don't get a shot. We play in the NIT. Um, so that was a, that was a, a big positive for us, um, backing up to the big East tournament. We knew we'd at least have to get one game there, uh, to get to, I think what put us at 19 and 10 at the end of the seasons. Mm -hmm. And we ended up playing Pitt, who had just squished us out at Pitt a week before, not even a week before, but we ended up getting by Pitt and then obviously ran into St. John's and that was that, but, um, yeah, for, for us, it was really just being hopeful and not really caring about where we were or who we ended up playing. It was purely give us a chance. And, uh, you know, we were hopeful, too, because at that point it was Eddie, Dwayne and Gary as seniors. And, you know, those those guys were on a mission. You know, they wanted to end on a, on a positive note. Obviously, their careers there and they had had great careers. But, you know, you want to go out, you want to play as long as you can that last year. <laughs> And, uh, you know, those guys, obviously, um, you know, we were all really trying to do it for them as much as anything else. Talk about Jens and Prez both. Talk about what was Coach Mass's reaction when he found out we had to play Dayton on their home court? Um, well, in general, he was cranky. Um, so cranky? It, it starts you don't have to cranky. sugarcoat it, Harold. We're amongst friends, brother. Yeah. Tell it like it is, you know? No, nah, I mean, yeah, no, who, who, who would be happy about going to play a team on their home court? Again, another first, I think that was the last time, or, or a last, I think that was the last time yeah. a team could play on their home court, actually, in the tournament, too. Um, and, you know, you're playing in smaller arenas. They had won, I think, 15 games in a row that season at home, including some wins over, you know, yeah. marquee names, Michigan and whoever, you know, a couple other teams, Indiana, maybe, that were highly ranked teams out of their conference, and our team and Dayton were really similar, but coach coach was always animated. Everybody here knows 
you know, all of our coaches were kind of animated in their own ways, but Roly was certainly at the top of the list of um, wearing it on his sleeve, so to speak. And, um, um, you know, Prez, I, I don't know what, what, what you want to chime in on, but well, please. He was nailing the head. He was like, that's bull. That is just bull. <laughs> he went off, but uh, then he settled down and said, hey, this is what we have, so let's prepare for it. And yeah. uh, we had some time to go over all their stuff, and luckily, Things just worked out. Harold Jensen saved us that day with a last minute um, layup and we were off to the races. Yeah, ha Harold, you, you came in and uh, that's kind of when your attitude started shifting, right? You know, as a, as a player and as a person, right? You know, is that around the time that you had a, a conversation that you, I know you've talked about before? That you've yeah. had a conversation with coach where you, you kind of shifted your attitude from you know, be careful to go for it kind of, is that right for around sure. that time? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was, I was bummed about the first year and a half, you know, of, of uh, my career at Villanova. I, I wanted to come in and help and do some things. And, you know, you, you realize how good guys are when you get to that level and you start playing against, you know, the guys that are on this zoom and, and others in the league that were just so darn good. Um, so it was humbling in the beginning and, uh, you know, I had to grind it out, but coach mass was incredible, uh, sat down a bunch of times with him more than one and just continued to work on my psyche, you know, because that was a basket case for sure, you know, for many games and, you know, you go into a game and I'd be, you know, zero for five and then maybe come back and be two for five or whatever, but it was just nothing consistent. And, uh, between our crew, you know, helping me along and coach mass kind of, um, being daddy mass, you know, it was a, um, uh, it was kind of just fell into place for me at that, at that time. Horace, how, how about you guys? What did you guys do now? You guys won the big East tournament, right? So you got to expect your number one seed, your number one in the country, you got to stay in the East. Cause I know that they used to like to send Georgetown off of the East in the tournament. What were, what, what did you guys do? What was your tradition when they did selection Sunday? And we would fight. <laughs> 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 that's the best answer <laughs> that's all i remember doing at georgetown preparing that's one thing coach Thompson believed in preparing. i think when we were lower seeds when i was at georgetown he definitely would like to go out west um he felt that he could compete a little bit better for the west teams but i think the fight that we won um the big tournament that they were going to put us in the and uh, we were prepared for that uh you know uh, you know, I, I, Harold and Carol, you know, y'all probably got some stories about Rowley. Uh, I haven't seen him a couple of times in the final four. We, we went back and forth a little bit, just jabbing at one another. But, you know, Coach Thompson always wanted to prepare, man. And as uh, soon, soon as we finished the Big East, you know, we, we flew back, bus back. I don't know what I forget. Uh, but he was in prepare mode, you know, uh, getting on the film coordinator, you know, getting me this, this, this trying to get everybody in the East. So I'm pretty sure we were practicing. We wasn't sitting around hoping. Uh, we knew that we were in. Uh, and I think he did a great job because a lot of people expected us to uh, return anyway because we won the year before. So uh, that was his mindset and that was his preparation. So uh, we were probably practicing. Uh, and Billy was probably getting cussed out. So I don't know. Getting cussed out. Yeah, can, you can, your name, can I, I didn't know I you changed your name. I, I, Go got, ahead, I got a question because you brought up something. Uh, winning it the year before, uh, the attitude going into the next year. You guys just won it. Um, you're celebrating, yeah. and things are different. And what is the attitude going into the next season? I mean, coach. Um, I tell people that 84 championship and, 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 and losing to y'all guys in 85 made the 84 a lot better, obviously, uh, because we wanted to get that second one. But Coach Thompson, I mean, he was a machine. And, uh, you know, we celebrated, but we got back to work. Like I said, he, he, he keep you on task. And, uh, um, uh, you know, he wasn't afraid to let us know, hey, we won the national championship, but that's last year, you know, let's look forward and, and uh, go forward. So, I mean, I mean, we celebrated. Uh, I mean, I enjoyed that, that 84, uh, but we got back to work in 85. I know we, it, that's one thing I tell people now as a basketball coach that, hey, 
if we didn't play hard, we would probably just be an average bunch of guys uh, at Georgetown University because he made us play hard. And uh, I think that's one of the things that made us successful because we played hard. We believed in playing hard. But hey, right. it was like the business. Uh, we yeah. always wore, wore coat and ties when we on, went on the road, uh, Hal. Wow. Hmm. And we did as well, right, guys? We, we always had a, a jacket and tie when we went on the road as well. We wore the coats and ties and all that, but I <clears throat> the way we came off the 85, and, and Billy and Billy, you guys were gone and by that time, but ours was a little different coming in my senior year. We, um, we celebrated, and we, we, I think we were more lax. Massimino started getting all kinds of um, offers, commercials and things yeah. were kind of put on the shelf. So we didn't get back to work, work. We had three young kids that came in, Doug West and, and Kenny Wilson, Gary uh, Massey. And uh, we didn't get into it like, uh, like we should have uh, back to business. We were still kind of living off of, hey, we did that thing. We, you know, we had a pretty strong summer of, uh, of a new guy came in that we call Rambo to, to work out with us and, and uh, lift some weights and things like that. But it was really a laid back time. And then we had to fight to get back into the tournament after that. Um, it, was a, it was a rough go. And, and I remember our last NCAA game that I just, I just passed out for a week because it was so much work to get back there. Uh, and I did not want to be the, uh, the first guy to miss out on an NCAA tournament. I remember grabbing Doug West and just grabbing his shirt and said, we're not going to miss this. You're not going <laughs> to, this is not going to happen in my senior year. We're going to make this thing and we're going to make a run. Uh, but I just remember being so exhausted because we started off so slow that we had to come back and work and work and work. And um, by the end of the season, it was just like, okay, we lost to Georgia Tech. I'm okay with that. Just let me go to sleep. <laughs> it, was yeah. a, it was a battle, a battle. You guys were still right there with all your guys. You know, yeah. everybody was still on a team back. We lost <laughs> that the key three pieces that um, got us there and helped us. So I thank God that we had the people that we had that knew how difficult it was going to be. But whew, we we battled just to get um, to the point where we can make the NCAA tournament the next year. Let's, so let's, think... let's talk now the road to the final four. So let's get Ron and Bill uh, from St. John's. Talk about your travels now. You guys are in the West. You start off with Southern. Okay. Not, not a terrible, that's a typical 116 matchup in the day, right? Then you guys come up against Arkansas and it's a three point game, right? So you guys want to talk a little bit about that or ju even just, just talk about that run because no one has – Georgetown, you guys look like you had an easy run when I looked at the numbers. But <laughs> <laughs> nobody looked like they had an easy run to the, fi to the Final Four. But talk a little bit about some of the things you guys remember along that way, both Bill and, and Ron. Why don't you start off, Bill? Uh, Southern game, I don't remember too much. I think they were a little smaller and athletic. Uh, but I remember Joe Klein in Arkansas. And Joe, Joe's a big, Joe's bigger than me. And he's just wider. We're both seven feet, but he's just wider and he could rebound it. And actually Louie came to me, he goes, I don't care if you score a point today, just don't let him get a rebound. And I think I finished the game with a 16 rebounds, uh, but Joe had 21. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> you, know, you know the old expression bill feather duster you know it was yeah. didn't want you to be a feather duster right day a peacock duster next today, day feathers. Uh, yeah peacock today feather duster tomorrow exactly we remember that right <laughs> so uh it was uh it, it was a physical battle for us and it, it was a tough game i mean ronnie you, you remember more about it yeah i mean it was it was, it was actually the, i think the game that put us on track because like Bill said, the Southern game was, it wasn't, you know, it was the first game of the tournament, so it's kind of always a little bit uh, touch and go in the beginning. But as soon as we, we got, you know, we got got into it, it was, it, it became pretty easy. So it was, I think, coming to the next game, I don't, I wouldn't say that we were relaxed or we, we were, we were maybe, maybe a bit over, not overconfident, but we felt was feeling good, you know, feeling good because we got past the first one, you know, the second one, and keeping in mind, our, our, our objective was to get to the final four. 
So once we once we knocked off Southern, it was like, okay, so we're gonna roll in. And then we run into to, to this team here who gave us fits. And we, that made us realize like we can go home. You know, we can go home and and I, I can remember, I can remember, you know, after that game when we go back to the hotel, it was it was really like, you know, okay, we got that one done, what's coming next? So that game was I think was really important um for our march to the to the, to the final four for, for, for sure. For sure. After mm-hmm. that. After that, each game, I wouldn't say it was easy, but the focus was 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 on point. Yeah. So next game, you got Kentucky, and and Skywalker is, I think, the leading t- scorer in the tournament. And apparently, something happened when he got poked in the eye or something. And mm-hmm. so you guys remember some of that because I mean, now you're up against the Blue Bloods. You get Kentucky, and then you got NC State, who's uh who who had won, you know, recently. So you know, talk about some of those games. Uh, Kentucky was what Brett Barrup. Yeah, yeah, Brett Barrup, Long Long Island, another Long Island guy. Yeah, uh, that was about Joby Hall's but, last game. Yeah, it was. I mean, our game plans were very similar. I mean, it's Walt and Chris were obviously the the focal points of our offense. Get them the ball, and then we kind of try to fit fit in and where it worked. And if we stuck to our execution and what we did, what we did. And I think that's what Louie kind of installed instilled in us. You know, it doesn't matter what they do. It's what we do and, and how we react to it. And if we run our stuff, we'll get it. And I think as Ron said that the Arkansas game kind of refocused us and, and got us back on track. So I, I know the Kentucky game was, was big. It was a good win for me because uh, Brett and I played against each other a little bit in high school and at the top 70 camp in Long Island, um, and, but then beating North Carolina and that, I just remember being elated. Yeah. Lorenzo Charles, he was a stud. That was your, that was yeah. your assignment. It had to be. Yeah. And, and it, it was, it was big, but we, we, we played well and it was a close game, but I, I remember the last four minutes kind of being like, we got this, we're, 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 we're going to make it. And that's, that's what I'm remembering clearly right now in my head. That was pretty, pretty much we, we were going to get it done. So. It was uh, it was good for us because we like Ronnie said it, it was a goal and it's uh, as I told you I think last time Chris and I as freshmen talked about this uh, and achieving our goals and it was something for me that made me realize that you know all the hard work that we had done and uh, how coach had prepared us and what we had to endure to get where we were going was, was coming to fruition so it, it was special. Yeah. So I'm going to ask the Nova guys, Chuck. I'll give you a break on your boys here. Let me ask you guys. Tell me a little bit now. You guys have Dayton on Dayton's floor, and that's the 8-9 game, right, which, you know, perennially that's usually the best matchups, right? Now you come back and you have the number two team in the country, which is Michigan, and you're going to play them, and you guys are playing in Dayton, Ohio still, right? So how, how does that go? Go ahead, Prez. Uh, that, was, that was actually a tough game for me. Um, I had a routine that that I like to stick to um, prior to the game, and I don't know what happened, but I overslept, so I was groggy coming into the game. And thank God for uh, for Dwayne and and uh, and Ed just dominating that game. And um, we had Roy Tarpley, they had Butch Wade, they had some players. They had a yeah. Juan Jobert, Gary yeah. Grant. Yeah, Gary Grant. Yeah. They had a monster squad, but uh, I think some of the teams Richard that played, Ralford. they kind of overlooked us. They looked at our, our record. Um, they didn't realize how difficult the Big East was to play in. Um, exactly. The only losses, I think we had only one loss outside of the Big East. So you're talking nine losses in the Big East and then one outside. Uh, just the way that the Big East prepared us for any of those teams that we were going to play against, they, they really overlooked us, uh, Michigan, and they, they were looking for the next game. And once they got into a, uh, a situation where <laughs> they started puckering, they started getting nervous and they thought, oh my gosh, these guys are far better than we gave them credit for. Um, they just started to, uh, they started to melt <laughs> and, you know, our confidence was there. But as the, the rest of the guys are talking about the confidence that you have, but the Big East prepared you for 
anybody you faced. As soon as you get on the court with anybody else, it's like, hey, you guys, you know, do you not know what we had to deal with with Walter Berry and and all of Georgetown? Yeah, Patrick Ewing, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Georgetown, they they downplay the talent that they have. Y'all need to stop because David Wingate and, and, and Reggie, <laughs> Reggie, Williams, Reggie Williams and Billy Martin and Patrick Ewing and Hart, man, it just kept going. Yeah. In so, that in that game, Prez, in the Michigan game, though, and and you know, gents, you might want to talk about this a little bit. We had our own leprechaun at the end of the bench. Do you remember Jake putting the leprechaun's hat on because the game was played on St. Patrick's Day, and that's that's kind of when I knew that there was some forces at work there for us, right? <laughs> Jake Jake put on the uh, on a on a leprechaun's hat, and he said he was going to do that. You know, if the game got out of hand with a couple minutes to go, and he he did that, and um, Everybody looked at him like, what the heck? Are you, what are you doing? So he said, uh, coach gave him a hard time. Do you remember that, gents? Yeah, no, I, I do. I can kind of picture him on the sideline with with it on, with it on actually. Um, and there's not many people that a leprechaun's hat fits on, but it did fit on Jake's head. Right. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, I think I think in those games, you know, um, to Prez's point, we benefited greatly from the, the competitiveness of the league. Um you know, practicing in a sense against, you know, because we didn't win any of the games against St. John's or Georgetown during the regular season, but practicing against them, competing against Syracuse, Boston College was terrific, right? Um, Pitt was very athletic. and So I I think we were so prepared. Our our teams coming out of our conference were so prepared um, that, yeah, I think we caught teams by surprise. Certainly we did. Georgetown and St. John's and Syracuse, I don't think we're going to catch teams by surprise, but we had a chance to catch teams by surprise a little bit. And I think we we took advantage of that. You know, I don't think well, they realized uh, how good our front line was, for example, you know, between Prez, Eddie, and Dwayne. You know, those guys were studs, and they could, they could compete and hang with any of the big men that we were going to play against out of conference because of the battles – against these guys you know um yeah. and mass amino uh with the non-shot clock you guys the way you could control tempo and literally make it a possession you follow us we're gonna make our foul shots and he was he was just a genius at that at that style of game you know yeah right he so was. that right and then you finish that and now you got maryland so okay you got michigan then you got maryland right len bias i mean so that game had to be even, you know, the next step, because now you're in a sweet 16, right? And everybody's thinking, oh, good, number one's gone. We got this. So now you become maybe an easy foe. But, you know, was that – did that follow through with Maryland? Maryland was a little different because we played them at their place earlier in the year. Um, and that would have been our second loss outside of the Big East. And um, uh, Lenny Bias put on a show that day. He, he caught alley-oops from all over the court. Um, and he just had a dunk fest. Um, I thought we lost by an awful lot of points, but it turned out we only lost by three. Um, but yeah, we owed them. And, and I had a horrible game against him. So um, I, I was definitely in focus then and the rest of us, um, we were on a mission at that point. Once we won the first two, it was uh, no, there's no, no stopping now. Um, so Maryland wasn't going to be a big issue because we owed them. We definitely owed them. Hey, Lenny, I just looked this up. Len Bias had 53 straight double doubles until that game. 53 wow. He held straight. him to single digits, Sonny, and I don't eight think points. that's happened yeah. before or since. You know, I think he had eight points, right? We we kept running. Uh, got Eddie Eddie did a masterful job on him, and then we kept running everybody at him. And um, he wound up with eight points in the, in the tournament against us. Hmm. Right. So – then it's Carolina. So, okay, blue blood, blue blood, blue blood, right? So you went through like a who's who of college games, right? Was that anything that's of a memory? We were tight that game. We were really tight in the beginning. The first half was awful. Um, coach kind of read us the riot act in the beginning of halftime and then turned it into a talk about, you know, he'd rather be eating pasta with his family. <laughs> And, you know, he kind of brought it, he kind of brought it into human perspective and said, like, look, you just go play basketball. Like you guys have done this your whole life. You know, we're capable. Um, Like it's, it don't make it more than it is. It's a basketball game. You know, he kind of really brought it down to that perspective and it changed all of us mentally going into the second half. And we came out and 
had a terrific second half. And um, towards the end of that game, when we knew we were going to win, um, it was one of the most emotional points of my life being out on the mm -hmm. court and having that sensation, knowing that you're going to the final four. Um, I was crying in the last minute on the court, literally crying. And it was just an incredible elation, you know, to be in that position and feel that uh, joy and, and know for coach mass who had gotten to that game, I think two or three times before, maybe three times before and hadn't gotten past it too. It's another Against Carolina game. too, gents. I mean, that's why it yeah. was you always, so, Carolina was always his nemesis in that game. I, I'm the only guy here that didn't go to the Final Four. So after, um, let me just take that out of my heart. That stagger. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. Sorry. Okay, but no, I could feel it because that was everybody's goal every year, right? And, sure. and I, I remember reading something to St. John's. It was Louis's first Final Four, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's pretty spectacular. So let's talk to, let's get Horace and Billy. Let's talk about your run now, right? So you guys are in the East. You guys start out with Lehigh, the powerhouse, right? Well, it's a one versus 16 and it's in Hartford, Connecticut. So probably you guys played UConn and Hartford. So it got to be a little familiar surrounding. So talk a little bit about that, Horace, when you guys are going up and it sounds like you guys are laser focused in 85, if not as much or more than 84. Yeah, because we had, we had a lot on the line. I mean, I think we had everybody coming back with the exception of Fred and Gene. Um, so, you know, you have Patrick, Billy, Gene Gage, Michael Jackson, uh, Reggie Williams. So, I mean, the expectation was always high for us. So, you know, like I said, we came in there, uh, folks understood what we what we were trying to do. Uh, and, you know, like you say, focus, you know, code side business. Uh, and it was just the expectation, you know, Coach Oliver has a tendency when the expectation is for us to win. You know, he have a tendency, uh, as Harold uh, Jensen said, to give us a ride like all day long. So, you know, when we play against uh, uh, opponents that we uh, supposed to be, you know, sometimes those not fun games for us, but we went out there and did what we had to do. So, uh, we were we were focused. Uh, I think. That year in 84, I think the December of 84, I remember reading, uh, I think we might have, I don't know who we beat, uh, but the paper or the newspaper said, hey, the hell with it, give Georgetown the national championship now. And, uh, you know, I think Coach Alfie did a great job of steering us and keeping us focused because uh, a lot of people were gunning for us. And, and, you know, he understood that and uh, he prepared us uh, based on that. So, so you guys, right, but it looks like when you guys get to Loyola, Loyola, Chicago, you're down two at halftime, right? Talk about that a little bit. You remember that, Billy, that game? Because, Coach, uh, yeah. from what I could read, they, they said sure that you blanketed it. Scoring the nation, blanketed Al again. Frederick Hughes. Yeah. yeah. They had the leading scorer in the nation, a guy named Al Frederick Hughes, who lighting it up. And uh, we, we promptly shut him down a little bit. He and we? Game. I think you did. But, uh, you know, it's simple. For 85, you, you, you guys are you're absolutely right. We were laser focused. We had everybody back. There was no reason why we, we shouldn't have believed we could win it again. And, uh, and we were out to prove that, you know. That, that was it. I mean, we, you know, from day, it didn't matter who we played. You know, we, 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 we were mostly seniors. Myself, you know, Patrick was seniors, Ralph Dalton, uh, you know, Horace. David, Reggie, they had experience. They they were they were sophomores. You know, we had juniors, and uh, you know, we were ready. We were ready. It, it didn't matter at that point. It really didn't matter who we played. You know, it's just that you know at the end we ran into somebody that was more familiar with us than, than we would have liked. <laughs> well, the, you know, like your next game though, Georgia Tech, they had because they beat us, right? So they had the two big guys. They had Sally, and then they had another oh. seven footer, Joseph, and then a couple of uh, Dow Ripple. Pat Right, and Patrick got in foul trouble, right? So, Mark Price. So your Mark challenge, Price. right? Yeah, Mark Price. They were good. That game. Dwayne Farrell. Yeah. That game stepped in for Patrick uh, and myself. You know, it's a five and a four, and uh, we just battled. You know, and you know, our guards really dominate that game. You know, you know, with uh, with Michael and David and Reggie and Horace. You know, they they basically stepped up their game because you know Patrick was gone. We needed more scoring. 
You know, they weren't going to come to me. They weren't going to go to Ralph. And so they did. They stepped up. But that's that's what championship teams do. That game okay. right there, that, that was probably one of my favorite games. Like, I got the only dunk. If you go look at that at the end of the game, Mark Price keeps the ball, it bounces long, I tap it out, and I should have passed it to uh, Reggie. I say, what the hell? And, um, I dunked the ball, man, and I remember Patrick was grabbing me. I guess everybody was so – I mean, I was excited for dunking the basketball, but I guess everybody was so excited that, hey, we got to the final. Exciting, man. Everybody had to step up, and you guys – The weight was off our shoulder to get there. And that's the end of part one. Come back and listen to part two where we're going to cover that road to the final four, the opponents they faced, some of the challenges each team faced, and ultimately how they matched up yet again in the final four, 1985.